Hello team, and welcome to another episode of AMZ Seller Real Talk. Um, we are very excited for this particular episode. Um, before we dive into why we're excited, um, <laughs> uh, for anyone who doesn't know, my name is Curtis Johnson. Uh, I am the president of Managed by Stats. Uh, I am also a novice Amazon seller, meaning I don't yet have a product source from China, but we're in the process. And then over here, we have the lovely Jade Coleman. Uh, she is a veteran seller and also just came on board with us to kind of just honestly help us with this podcast. Yeah. And then um, for anyone who doesn't know or doesn't uh, hasn't seen him in the back yet, we have the one and only Justin Coleman. He is uh, he's making sure that we all sound good. Oh yes, and then Lorelai, the their beautiful daughter. Yes. She she is <laughs> she just she's made me. a guest guest <laughs> appearance. <laughs> And then we have um, our amazing guest, Mr. Marty Sherman. Hello. Marty is uh, he he's a you're a guru, I would say, when it comes to sourcing from China. You've been doing it for a very I've long time. I've been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. So um, since you've already, if you haven't seen the first episode, you'll uh, you should probably you know see that first so you know who we are. Right. Um, but otherwise, um, I figured we'd dive just right on in. Before obviously you forget to though, make sure you subscribe. Make sure if it, if it has a like feature, because I know some of these platforms don't like it, share it with people that you think should see this stuff. This one's gonna be specifically on sourcing. Yeah. Um, but now that we've kind of gotten some of those basics out of the way, um, Marty, why don't you tell us about yourself? Well. <laughs> <laughs> on the spot. I know, no pressure. Well, sourcing, uh, you know, I started sourcing for myself uh, in Asia back in the late 90s. And uh, it was my midlife crisis business. Most guys get a Porsche. I decided to start a business, an import <laughs> business. That seems like a much more effective midlife crisis to have. Uh, too many kids to fit in a Porsche. So. <laughs> Do you even fit in a Porsche? I'm tall and you're fairly tall. I don't fit in a Porsche. I can fit in a Porsche. convertible. Oh uh, yes, there you go. Because you can look over the windscreen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, carry on. <laughs> uh, so that led me to a, an import business where I started importing Christmas and Halloween decorations. Wow. wow. And that led me all around Asia, all up and down China, where I met lots and lots of people, lots and lots of factories. And basically, I've made every mistake someone could make. I learned... I learned on the streets. Yeah. <laughs> He's the OG. <laughs> so, you know, after you make the same mistake more than 10 or 12 times, it finally gets uh, clear to you that you shouldn't do those things or you should do other things. Right. That's, but, a, that's a good gauge. Yeah. But then you're the person that it's good for us to go to because then we don't have to make those mistakes. Yeah, exactly. Done that. I yeah. guess then your clients probably just have to not make the mistake of not listening to you yes. is probably the mistake they make 10 or 12 times. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm an easy person to not listen to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, where did you start in Asia? Did you just kind of bounce all around or was there like, did you have a specific area that you worked in or? Well, I knew there was, there was one specific product mm -hmm. I was looking for. I was doing giant fiberglass statues. Oh, wow. It was my first heartthrob. And uh, I couldn't find where they were made and I, that's when you know search engines were coming into their own, and I was right. just googling and yeah. googling and googling, and I figured out they came from the Philippines, but the factories that made them closed down, so there was no way to find them. So I said, "Screw it!" I, I finally found a trade show in Manila. I said, "I'm just going to get in a plane. I'm going to go into that <laughs> trade show, and I'm going to find these these <laughs> products I wanted." This is a different era, though, too. Yeah. yeah. Tr you know, travel <clears throat> into China, Thailand, all of these other countries is a little bit more of an established, well, not today. Now you, you just don't do it. Yeah, yeah. But, you don't travel at all. But that's a different period. different situation. But before, I mean. Hashtag yeah. thanks COVID. Yeah. <laughs> no mask. <laughs> no mask. <laughs> no <glass. laughs> so it was a little bit more wild, wild west. So you went to a trade show, found your, I'm, I'm going to go on a limb. Santa statue? Santa statues. Yes. That's I, I first started off with Christmas. Yeah. Christmas yeah. was the number one. I had a nice concentrated audience because I was doing trade shows. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, you could, you know, I could sell anything. You know, we tried animals, we tried 
policemen, Indians, cowboys. We, we tried everything, mm -hmm. and everything was okay, but there was such a concentrated Christmas market. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. That uh, I went, I found just the most awesome Christmas items. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, because now, if, I mean, it's, it's October right now, but if yeah. you go to a store, they already have their Christmas stuff up, so right. that's... And well, some Halloween. Mostly Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mostly Christmas. Is, is it just me or is Christmas moving earlier and earlier, earlier every, and every single every year? Every single year. Yeah. yeah. Which well, I guess I, is good for people selling on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, but when I was sourcing Christmas, it would start in January. Oh, wow. Because by the time March came along, your Christmas sales were done at the trade shows. Oh, wow. Mm. Really? That makes sense. January, February, March, we would sell. Mm -hmm. April, May, June, uh, we would produce. July, August, September, we delivered. October, November, December, right. I would oh. develop the line for the next year. Right, from a development I get standpoint. You. That I makes get sense. you. That was before it was. Okay, I so see how that goes. It was an all year thing. Yeah, wow. Wow. It's changed a lot since Christmas then. all year. <laughs> Christmas all year. <laughs> so now, um, now <clears throat> you're more import export and you work with um, all levels of sellers, or do you target specific types of sellers? As far as, do, do you work more with veterans or more with novice or? Well, you know, the veterans like to do it themselves. Yeah. Mm. But we don't always know what we're doing. So. And then <laughs> a lot of times, see, you got to understand what I do is right now is uh, just to finish earlier up. Uh, I started looking for a wider range of products. So mm -hmm. that took me to trade shows in China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm where I realized that Halloween was just as lucrative, if not more, than Christmas. Wow. So, so that doubled my, my business by doing Halloween and Christmas. That's awesome. And we actually tried Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, we Easter, we tried every other one, but it was just Thanksgiving and Christmas were the only items that yeah, stayed Yeah, Halloween in. and Christmas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, I went to every trade show I could find in China. Mm -hmm. And I'm visiting factories and traveling around China. You know, mainly I, I just love to travel around China, eat different foods in different areas. <laughs> oh, it begs the question. How many oh, times yes. would you say you've been to China? I've been to China well over 100 times. Whoa. Wow. Wow. I don't even know if I could say I've been to the supermarket well over 100 times. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to the supermarket more than 100 times. I'm just kidding. Um, so then, okay, obviously since Trump closed down you know, travel from China, US, US, China, back in, I think it was January, January, February? Uh, I think, um, yeah, uh, February, March. What are your dealings like now? How, how has this changed the marketplace? Well, mostly I have existing customers call me and just say, hey, I need another order, help me with this, help me with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, the new client market is a little bit tough. Is it because most people wanna go with you? Is that sort of how that ends up going? Uh, not really. Uh, a lot of times people want to go to the trade show. Oh, yeah. I see. So Canton Fair, things like Canton that. Canton yeah. Fair. So if they're not going to the Canton Fair and they're sitting home, usually someone will get on Dali Baba and uh, see how they do with his 40 thieves. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a good point. I never thought of it that way. You, know, you sound like was, you're a fan. <laughs> well, it was always, you know, the people, the agents I deal with. In China, you know, they say, look, it's real easy. Just get the people to send me the Alibaba listing. Then I'll get them a real price on a real product. <laughs> good. That's good to know. I'm yeah. sure that people are seeing my facial yeah. reaction. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. we're starting to source from China. And I'm like, oh, man, I think we found a good manufacturer. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No. You see, you got to understand the, the real good manufacturer in China doesn't speak English. Right. Mm. And they write English even worse. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you're looking for, when you look for a factory, you want someone who can produce product. Right. You're not looking for someone whose forte is selling. Right. Because if their forte is selling, what do you think? It's probably because they had to become very good at selling. Well, <laughs> well the other thing is you're going to come with your products. What do you think they're going to sell? Yeah. Is your products. Right. Oh, that's, that's a, true. And you'll become their product concept. designer. Yeah. Yeah. And you found you found them on Alibaba. Someone else will find them, and they always need new good stuff to show. Mm -hmm. You know, new 
new bait to lure the new right the new fish you make yeah. well thought out modifications and that's now everyone else's modifications it's and right. yeah and it's true i've had friends who have had stuff ripped off or they <coughs> bought something off of alibaba and then it turns out that they were ripping someone off and didn't even know it you know trademark know. um infringement so that's a good to know kind of a <laughs> scary concept yeah it's well, funny okay maybe you can set me a little bit at ease though because so far we went through we went through the process me and my silent business partner for anyone who knows that part but um we we started out on alibaba we're not knowing the difference between a trading company manufacturer so we're we're going through this and we're contacting 50 people 50 different you know just listings and every single one of them is like no we don't do modifications we're not no i'm sorry we can't do that modification so then we learned okay you need to deal with someone who is the manufacturer, not a trading company, which from my understanding is just, they're the seller import export side of things. Is there something further than that, than just dealing with just the manufacturer? Is there something else like, what are the things you should be looking for when you're sourcing? Well, number one, you're looking for a supply chain. That's what you, I don't care if it's from a trading company or direct, I don't care where you did it, you're looking for a, uh, reliable supply chain that that's your goal yeah. how who who is on that chain is secondary uh, there's there's many factors uh, one thing most people don't realize is that a Chinese factory must have a an export license in order to sell out of the country mm -hmm. okay many factories just have a, an, a license where they can sell in China mm. so now some of the best factories are the ones that can only sell in China, wow. and your only access to them is through a trading company. I see. So now, when you contact someone and you ask questions. Sorry guys, you're probably hearing Lorelai in the background. <laughs> she decided to wake up. Yeah, hey, it's fine, she is, Lorelai has left the building. Okay, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> so one, one indicator I always looked at is, how long does it take them to get back to you? Okay. okay. How, what's the time? Because here's what happens. You call, you reach a trading company through Alibaba, and you say, look, I want this and this, but I want it, I want it in red, and I want it half the size, and mm -hmm. I want it to have a long neck, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now the guy says, well, let me see. So two days later, he gets back with the, okay, the factory can do it. Now, you don't know which factory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So now this guy took him two days. So we obviously didn't just call the factory and get back with you. Mm -hmm. That would have taken 10 minutes. Right. right. He obviously called a friend and said, hey, I'm looking for someone who could do this. Okay, now if his friend knew someone, now it would have been an hour he would have gotten back <laughs> with you. But now his friend said, well, let me check. So his friend says, oh, I got a, you know, yeah. you might have 10 people friend to a in friend this to a friend. Yeah. So now this, this is a supply chain Mm -hmm. That will never be broken because if you break that chain, the guy doesn't get paid. Wow, okay. right. that makes and sense. He's yeah. got a hot lead, so now every time you ask a question, it's going to be passed down that chain. And probably each one of those people is adding a little bit more. Right, right. So, which maybe you don't care. I mean, if yeah. it's an awesome product, like I said, is a working supply chain, a working reliable supply chain is a working reliable supply right. chain. Right, that's true. That's true. But. Uh, these are vias on the line. Mm -hmm. If you have too many vias on the line, you get a stop line. Right. So when you say, hey, I have a problem, now this is gonna echo down. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just quieter so, and quieter. <laughs> now, we're also dealing with la languages here. So yeah. how much of that ends up being like telephone? Like you say, you know, I'd really like to add a, you know, a blue, uh, you know, little clicker to the top. And then at the other end, it's like, I'd like to add a blue ball to the other end. Does it happen more than you would think when you're dealing with this sourcing issue? Well, you, you know, about about the easiest thing you could do is find a product and sell it. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that takes no creativeness, okay, no design capability. Yep. Right. But uh, for me, the product design, you know, making an awesome product. Mm -hmm. 
it, I always thought that that was my artistry, is creating something that the retail world has never seen mm -hmm. before. <laughs> that was, and then when it sells and it's, you hit a home run with your creativeness, you know, you're king of the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I would never buy a product. Uh, as is. As is. Yeah. I would go and I'd see. That's how I'd get my ideas. See, when I was in... One of my biggest businesses was Halloween. Mm -hmm. I would basically go to China knowing that I had to come home after having designed 350 to 400 brand new products that no one's ever seen, no one's wow. ever thought of, wow. that I had never even thought of. All I would do on the jet to China is clear my head. I would go with just a clear head. I would just mm -hmm. start with, I always like that. My whole mantra was we start with zero. Okay. Yeah. And we go to one. Yeah. You know, rather than start with fixed ideas, because that would destroy my creativeness. Mm -hmm. Wow. But that was a different business. That's where my product depended on new, exciting, and different. Sure. Right. But I think Amazon, you're depending on uh, familiar items that people need that you're going to just supply with better. Velocity, right. yeah. Like search Reliable. velocity that you can actually yeah. deliver well. Yeah, right. and being reliable and being a, a good quality because if you have the cheap stuff up there, you get the bad reviews, and then yeah, and then you disappear. <laughs> I've seen yeah. I've seen that happen to people. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> but you know, there's also you know one thing I learned in design. You could design in so many potential flaws mm. that you've made your product impossible to mm. make perfect. Yeah. So I would always design. I called it my. I called it slop factor. Everywhere I could, I said, "Okay, this has to be three inches." But if we do this, it doesn't matter if it's two and three quarters, three. Oh, I see. Three and an eighth, yeah. three and a quarter. As much slop factor as you can bring in. Yeah. So I'm understanding that right. I want to make sure I get that. Meaning, <clears throat> if you are designing something that has to be exactly one inch, you have a problem. You have a potential problem. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. That makes sense. Because then I guess you have to, I guess like obviously Apple, for instance, they source things, their, their factories are predominantly in China. So there is, you can always get that exacting degree, but I'm sure they're paying for that. And they have many people like you scouring the entire country to find that. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So every, every spec you have has to be checked to make sure it was built to the spec. Mm -hmm. wow. That's what I'm saying. So. Uh, it's best, as far as I'm concerned, the, the absolute best thing you can do is go to the factory, talk to the factory. Right. And then take a look at the manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're making a, a, a glass. Mm -hmm. You go back and see what are the steps in making a glass? Right. What are the actual steps involved? Uh, how can I now, knowing, understanding the whole manufacturing uh, process, how can I put my changes in, in a way that I'm not going to throw a big wrench into this factory's mm. machinery? Because right. 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 there's people do that. They throw a wrench into the factory's machinery. Yeah. They have no idea what they're talking about. They just have this great idea, and, and uh, they... They order it and they wonder why it keeps coming back wrong. Mm. It's because they've just designed something that's impossible to make within that factory's capabilities. abilities. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. So what is this factory capable of? And what I used to do, see now if you go to a factory, that's the first thing I'd do is I'd say, let me see your graveyard. Oh, so all, all the products you tried the to make of, that didn't work. Old, yeah, well, no, it's just the products they have made in the past. They'll have them in a room. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. They'll have samples of all this stuff. And you look at it. Oh, cool. Most importantly, you know what they can do. Right. Okay. If you really understand the machinery and the process, then you'll know what they can't do. Right. right. So now, now you let your creative juices flow in the correct direction. Right. Yeah. And the changes you want to make, you'll say, oh, I was being stupid with that one. Let's, right. not, let's just leave it like that. <laughs> let's leave the big hole on the top of the glass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to work better that way. But then if you know what they can do, you say, okay. You go in and say, so we can 
decrease the amount of glass and make it cheaper sure. without changing the structural integrity. Mm -hmm. We can change the shape. We can change the, the angles. Mm -hmm. We can change the colors. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that's hard to do if you're just, if you're just talking to them, like if you're going over Skype or whatever, whatever application you're using, what's Alibaba app? messenger. Oh. <laughs> I have to tell you, they what it's very interesting because, uh, I, I know quite a bit of Mandarin. I can hold my own if the people are very patient with me. Mm. Right. Right. But they call a customer a fish. Wow. Why do they call him a fish? A fish. It's a fish. They're going fishing. And a good customer is the big fish. Dayu <laughs> is the big Dayu. fish. I mean, that makes sense. And all the dealings that we've had with, with um, factories and things like that, I can totally see that because there's a couple times where we've been fished and then and then you know we don't want to reorder because the the product comes to us not exactly how we yeah, had anticipated sure see now you've been you've been taught in our culture that if your quality is bad your customer won't come back and that's a bad thing mm -hmm. yeah Oh, but they, that's, they don't care. No, they don't <laughs> care. It's, it's true. It's true. Their number one business is brand new buyers to China. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fresh fish. Yeah. <laughs> fresh. <laughs> They'd Not that old rotting thing. <laughs> that they already pulled out. They, they need new, new ones. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's why it's very important. Like what I, when I set up, what, what, I'll tell you, one thing I learned very early is I, I had some good friends. I met them, and they, they would give me advice. Mm -hmm. I says, you need a group. Mm. It does take a group mm. to get products out of China. Mm. Wow, okay. Because if you take a look at all of the different functions that go right. on it's either you doing every single function mm -hmm. or you letting a specialist who knows mm -hmm. how to do the function do the function sure. yeah. and one of the functions of dealing with the chinese company is speaking chinese that, that would make sense. sense yeah so i've tried my best i've you know i can i can get some stuff across in yeah. chinese yeah. and i can i can order lunch i can i can do many things but when it's going over product details you want someone who speaks Mandarin, who understands sure, you, sure. Yeah. who's working on your side. Because if your contact point isn't on your side, you've just set yourself up with the biggest problem you can imagine. Right. right. So now speaking on that, can you walk us through um, just some generic product and walk us through the process that it would go through? Um, like, yeah, what, what is your process? Yeah. What do you, like, I call you up. I say, I would like to make this stand this stand this stand just because it's right here and we can dissect it all we want since it's right in front of us and we say okay marty we want this stand what what are you going to go through to make it from concept to physical product here in clearwater florida well the easiest thing to do is just go to the canton fair let's find people who make the stands we got five or six companies mm -hmm. let's go visit the factories mm -hmm. all things being equal who had the highest emotional tone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, who were the easiest to deal with, who were giving you stupid hurdles to jump over. Because mm. they do. Some Sometimes it's like, you want me to do what? Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know, yeah. We, Skip. Yeah. So if you want to find, now let's say you're going to modify this. Yeah. Right. We need a company that's your size. Okay. So now if you say, look, I need to modify this. My first order is going to be $5 million. Mm -hmm. Anyone, pretty much anyone's going to deal with you. <laughs> but if you say, we're going to modify this, my first order is going to be 500 yeah. mm -hmm. Then we need to find a smaller company that makes a decent product that's willing to see uh, you as you are now, knowing that if he does a good job, he will grow with you. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are people, there's, you know, Chinese factories aren't all crooks. Right. There's some awesome people. Yeah, you know, and I actually wanted to ask you about that because, unfortunately, with um, and I'm not saying that Trump right, wrong, and different. I'm not. I don't want to get into the politics of it, but with him calling it the China virus, but then also on top of that, especially with sellers, there is a little bit of a stigma because you hear about if you don't work on the branding side, some Chinese seller is going to come knock off your product. Yada yada. There, there is a little bit of a stigma there, and I, I, I have no personal dealings with anyone mm -hmm. from mainland China. 
I've also heard though on the other side that they're a very proud culture as well, that quality is very important. So what, as a seller, what are you actually dealing with when you're going to China, wanting to source a product from China? What, it, what is it in your much greater experience than mine? What would you actually give as an assessment there? Well, it, it's personal relations, interpersonal relations, because mm -hmm. the way the Chinese culture is, if you're part of their family, they'll do anything for you. Mm. They'll look out for you, they'll care for you, and it would be just a total shameful moment for them to cheat someone in their family, mm. right? But if yeah. you're not, fresh fish. <laughs> 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 you're a chicken for the plucking. <laughs> so, that's, that's one one of the things I would do is when well, I was in China four or five times a year anyway. Yeah. So I'd visit the factory. I'd let them take me out for right. lunch. Mm. I'd eat whatever they put. They in put in front of you. Me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd put it in my mouth, and I'd say, "Oh man, thank you for for uh, feeding me insects and <laughs> enlightening my palate. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for feeding me unmentionable parts of animals that I would never dream of putting in my mouth. The FDA would never allow this. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I've eaten, I've eaten some funny things. I had a, I had a very good friend who uh, would take me to the most hole-in-the-wall places that he could find in California, Mexican restaurants that were unmentionable. unmentionable. They, let's just say they weren't getting an A-plus rating for their cleanliness. But I've had some really, really good, yummy foods that, yeah, body parts you don't usually eat. The good stuff. <laughs> yeah. The good. Well, after a while, you realize that uh, you know, people, they'll tell you, well, they'll eat anything because they were very poor and uh, that's, that's all they had to eat. Mm -hmm. And that might be true in some instances, but actually some parts of these animals have flavors that are just incredible. Wow. That can't be duplicated with right. a steak or a hamburger. Now, I already know that this is uh, an area where you are an expert in the sense of eating, let's say, eclectic foods. Um, what is the, at least for the average person listening, what would you say is the most unusual thing you've ever eaten? Armadillo scales. <laughs> that is, that is. I've never even no, had that thought. Um, no, I didn't even know you could eat armadillo scales. <laughs> Neither did I until it went down. <laughs> Where did you eat armadillo scales? That was in Guangzhou. Wow. It was, is it, it like was, a delicacy or just something that they oh, were? Oh, very. Wow! Wow! Okay. Wow. You know, they they cook them for days and I can't imagine. Yeah, they get soft, <laughs> but you know that's the flavors. Just you you you're not you're not getting that flavor anywhere else, and right. it's not a bad I'm sure. flavor. Yeah, wow. and I've eaten starfish. I've eaten that's insects, awesome. and I've eaten. I, any animal you'd care. I haven't found monkey yet, but that's about really. The only one I'm I surprised. Found. Wow, have you eaten bat? I've <laughs> Recently. <laughs> well, it's funny. I was in Wuhan in November. <laughs> okay, we Ladies found a patient gentlemen, zero. We have found patient zero. Patient zero. <laughs> But actually, by all accounts, I think I was the one who infected them the first. The bat, yeah, <laughs> from eating armadillo scale. <laughs> but I've had turtles, and you can eat a turtle shell. Actually. As yeah. I guess cook yeah. long I, I enough, you can eat that. about yeah. anything. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> as as um, how has how has uh, how have recent events changed um, your relationship and and uh, with China and um, sourcing and doing all that? How is how is all this affecting that right now? Well, actually, anyone who's needed help from me has gotten help. Oh, good. I've been able to get every product made that I need to get made. My sources will never hate me. Good. I'm always, you know, I take care of my sources. Yeah, you know, of you course. Want, you want them to treat you like family, so I treat them like family. Right. Sure. I always right. make sure they're making enough of a, a profit to make it worthwhile. I make sure the people that are using them, I make sure they get paid. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I make sure if the person who's using them doesn't pay them, I pay them just so the next time I need them, they're still happy to deal with me. Yeah. Wow. And that's part of my team. Yeah. I've got people all up and down the, the coast of China, the eastern coast of China, 
and they're, they hear from me, they're always happy. That's good. Wow. That's good. Not everybody has relationships like that, but that's the way it should be. I mean, that's the way you should do business. Just to, it would it improve on their side and it improves on our side, and and then we don't have the animosity or the stigma that you're yeah. talking about. So, well, it makes it fun too. Yeah. Because yeah. when I come to town, it's, I'll give you a story. I had this one manufacturer in uh, just outside of uh, Guangzhou, and uh, I would go visit him, and he'd always take me out to these most incredible restaurants. I mean, just, you walk into these places, and I go, geez, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not because they're five star, but it's, you know, they would take me to this special restaurant that was a, an hour and a half out of town, and the, all they served was mountain chicken, the special chickens that grow on the side of the mountain. Huh. Wow. And he didn't have to take me there. He could have taken me to Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I got the real Chinese mountain chicken. Right. And what he told me, he says, I, I never, never, it's my policy to never take customers out to eat. He says, but when you come into town, uh, I don't, everything just changes. <laughs> <laughs> and he literally would do anything wow. for me. Wow, that's amazing. That's, 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 that's kind of relationships that you need to cement. Yeah. Well, you mentioned relationships. So, Obviously, you, you know, if you, even if you look at it from the perspective of an Amazon seller, right? You've got categories. Amazon has categories. Do you have, for instance, a manufacturer that, like your go-to one, two, three, four manufacturers for each category? Or are there times frequently enough that you find yourself sort of starting from zero and visiting a fa factory for the first time and going with them? Is it, like you said, more relationships that you've built over years and years and years or a lot more fresh? Well, what I would do, I would find an expert. You're asking me about, you want to make, well, this is like a real story. If you want to make glasses, what do I know about, gla you know, drinking glasses? Sure. What do I know mm -hmm. about drinking glasses? Mm -hmm. Well, after dealing with this one customer, I know a whole lot. <laughs> 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 but... There's some items where if you say this is what I'm looking for, all right, here's the guy we call. Okay. Right. right. But what I want to do is see, I don't want to be part of your supply chain. That makes sense. Because why should you, once I hook you up, what do you need me for? Right. You, you just want me to hook you up. Right. Then I'm just hanging around until you find a good excuse to get rid of me. Sure. Right. Well, and I guess that makes sense because any business owner, any business owner worth their salt will do what they can to lessen the cost of obtaining a product. Yeah, so I hook people up and I get out. Right. Yeah. Well, that's why. I, I, <laughs> you know, you pay me or I, I get a payment and then that's it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what I do is I find you. Number one, I find you someone who speaks English and Chinese. Okay. Right. And I got plenty of friends up and down the coast speaking English and Chinese. Now you have a guy. And depending on your product is who I will hook you up with. Mm -hmm. That yeah. makes sense. Because so, they have their own specialty in that yeah. particular area. Well, and I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I hook you up with someone, and we see how long it takes to get back. Ah, <laughs> okay. How long does it take to get back? So, okay, we've gone outside of his circle. Let's right, go right, okay. right. In, in some cases, though, is it, do you find, because that makes sense. You know, if, if someone is, you're calling them up, and they're saying, good, I'll get right back to you. That's one way, you know, you, they're going to probably take as little, add as little time as possible to get back to you. Yeah. Is it sometimes, though, that they're so backlogged, so busy that they just don't have, they're like, yeah, I'll get back to you. And then they start working out the next day because that's the first moment they can. Is that a problem or is that something that throws that gauge off or is it pretty common? You come up, they drop it, drop everything, work on it. Well, I like to think that once <laughs> once they hear they want to hear my voice, they drop everything Marty. for me. <laughs> and they do. They know, you know, if I'm helping them, they know, oh, okay, this is serious. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they're good. You know, these are good tried, tested communication lines. These are people that literally, if I came into town, they drop everything just to to take me out to lunch and dinner and breakfast and lunch and dinner and <laughs> right. breakfast. And so it's a relationship, but then also in your case, reputation. Well, that, you know, I always like to think that I brought some fun with me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, here you have a person who's, you know, Chinese people work hard. Yeah. 
Christ, they work hard. You know, it's, they'll wake up early and they work and then they go eat dinner and go to sleep. And it's, I come into town and it's like, hey. <laughs> Party. <laughs> That's okay. awesome. Okay. Well, then. Okay. So, sorry. Oh, like yeah. I have. A, I have a question. So, if you're when you're working with sellers, um, what do you find is the most uh, misunderstood concept or misapplied step or application that a seller does when working with uh, Chinese manufacturers or uh, on on their supply line? Where do you have to come in and clean up their shit? <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> well, usually they start off with price. Okay. Oh, okay. Interesting. So what, what should we start off with? Well, you know, I, I'll give you a, a real accounting. As you go to the Canton Fair, you see a product, you like it, say, okay, I'm just going to pull the trigger right here. Mm-hmm. And, you, mm-hmm. and you've argued the price down, and you've argued the price down, and you've argued the price mm-hmm. down. and Okay, now you've got the price where you want it. Now you're going into your modifications and packaging. Oh. <laughs> now your price completely changes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've just destroyed your deal. Yeah. If, right. if you talk price any time before your product is completely finished. Right. Uh-huh. Now, obviously, there, there's some, you need to make sure he's in range. You know, but you can do that by, well, especially if you're at the Canton Fair, you look at the product similar. You're going to find five, six, ten, maybe 200 other manufacturers selling similar products that are in that range. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. so you go do your homework. Say this guy's a dollar, this guy's a dollar five, this guy's ninety five. Okay. So you're getting the range at that point. Yeah. Right? yeah. But if your guy is five dollars, you know you might have hit the wrong guy. <laughs> but you don't talk price. Unless they make it out of plastic and he makes it out of gold. And then yeah. you <laughs> probably need not make it out of gold. But yeah, I get it. But what what I like to do is you know, you get real tricky about it okay this guy's much cheaper you just ask him some questions mm. why is yours so much cheaper what did you yeah. do to make yours cheaper or maybe you find one that's much more expensive you say look you know you're like the most expensive guy on the block yeah why and he'll tell you and you might say wow that's yeah. actually a good deal for the product because sure. you you raise your awareness of the product and it, and the more you know about what you want to sell and where you want to go, one of these guys, maybe the guy that's cheaper than everyone else, is everyone's making it out of steel and you're making it out of plastic and sure. the strength doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then, right. Yeah. Maybe you got it. Maybe everyone, no one cares as long as it's red. Right. Right. But right. How do you, it's harder to make the steel red. You can make red plastic that All even if you scratch it, it's still red. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Now, do you need to go, uh, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for anyone who's wondering why Jade right here is leaving, um, her daughter is, what, two months old? Two months. Two months. So she is a two-month-old. So uh, she needs to go to attend to her, her, her beautiful daughter, and she will be right back, but we will continue. <laughs> so um, it, it, you mentioned Canton Fair. <clears throat> now, right now, obviously, we have the dilemma that we can't. We just can't go to the Canton Fair. Is there a way of compensating for that? It, like, from with di- you've added distance. Obviously, Alibaba has its pros and cons. What? How do you compensate for not being able to go to China? Well, you know, it, it, we we really have no choice. It has to be done at a distance. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alibaba is very good because you can get pictures. Of yeah. What you want. yeah. I have one agent that the best way to communicate, best way he communicates with new clients is send me the Alibaba listings. Okay. And then I'll go and find you uh, what you want. Sure. And you've got someone right away who speaks English and Chinese, someone who's on your side. You say, hey, I I hook you up because he doesn't want to let me down. Right. And again, reputation, relationships, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, that makes sense. And yeah, it's definitely, the, I guess the one positive thing is that if we can't go to China, nobody can go to China in terms of the U.S. So it's at least it's just a different playing field. But um, someone who's starting brand new, they're, they're just getting into Amazon, they're looking for a product, they're ready to source. Um, what, like, she kind of asked it a little bit, but um, new sellers specifically, they maybe they don't have a ton of money. 
they can't afford to, you know, hire someone who is a sourcing. They can't afford not to. And that was my question. Can't afford not to, unless you're willing. Let's say you start off with five thousand dollars. Sure. I, I would say, okay, how much are you willing to throw away? Because you could just go to Alibaba and say, okay, I got five thousand dollars. Let me spend a thousand dollars. All right. You could do that. Sure. So then. But you, you got to remember one thing too. You have, all right. You have who's going to do the quality control? Mm -hmm. Are you just going to trust that they're going to have good quality without anyone ever looking at it? And most people say, well, I'll do my quality control. I'm going to look at every product when it gets here. It's so, already here. <laughs> so the order comes in, and you do your quality control, and you say, okay, half of this thing is unsaleable. <laughs> all right. The buck stops there. What are you going to do? You've already paid for the goods. <laughs> you think this place... And for some reason, their phone number's not working anymore. That's so weird. <laughs> well, it works, but now all of a sudden, they don't speak English anymore. <laughs> you think they're going to send you a check? Right, no. No, they knew it was crummy when they sent yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> and they said, what, there's no quality control? Shit, put it in a box. Yeah, right. Send it over. <laughs> Donations, Christmas presents for your family, right? There you go. Yeah. Okay, so it's, I, and I, and I kind of figured that that's what you were going to say, that it's of unquestionable value. Um, so then, fine. At one point, we are going to be able to go back over to China. And you would consider, for any brand new seller, it's of unquestionable value to go there as well. Not to, like, yes, you can use a sourcing agent like yourself. Um, is it on the same level as actually going to the Canton Fair, going and, you know, looking at the... It can be. It yeah. depends on your product. Okay. Where Okay, what are some areas <clears throat> that you can probably get away with it? Uh, if you're selling blankets. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the blanket's a blanket. You know, obviously the stitching, and you, you need to know about the stitching. But I would say, why would you sell anything if you weren't uh, as knowledgeable about that product as you could be? Sure. You know, just as an example, I was helping a guy find sheets. Okay. Right, and I had this picture in my mind how a factory would make sheets. I had figured rolls and rolls of fabric, and they'd roll it out, and they'd cut it, and yeah. they'd sew it. That makes sense, right? So uh, we got to this sheet factory. It was nothing like I imagined. Really? The sheet factory actually wove their own fabric. So instead of seeing rolls of fabric, you saw a million bundles of thread. Wow. And as it went out, they made that sheet exactly to your specs. If you wanted it 82 and 3 eighths of an inch, there was no scissors. It was That was the that size. That was the width that they that stitched That was the it. width that they Jeez. just made. It's probably, for most people, mind-boggling. The difference from, because, you know, let's face it, in the U.S., we are consumers more than much of anything. Consumers, you know, services, things like that, right? I, when you first went out there, was it just mind-blowing, the, the manufacturing side? Like, what actually goes into the things that we take for granted here? Well, you know what was probably the first thing that hit me is most people have no idea what goes into making a product. You know, you think, oh, we just pour the stuff in this end, turn on the machine, and it comes out that end. Something out of like a Looney Tunes car cartoon, right? Yeah. Magical. Yeah. Th that's how we're taught usually. But when you start seeing all the solutions that these people put into play, mm -hmm. I used to make these mechanized Christmas soldiers, right? And I, I would think, well, you go to the hardware store, you buy this gear and that gear. and But no, I get there. They've got a guy machining gears. Wow. To the size of your gear and specs of the gears you needed to make the arms work. They're making their own gear boxes because the heads would turn sure. and the arms would move and the lights would blink. So you say, okay, you go and you find a light blinker. No, they got a guy sitting there. That's soldering Maybe it on soldering at that moment. Soldering a circuit board to make your lights blink on your piece. Jeez. Wow. So then they are, there's a high level of technical expertise out there that we probably 
again, like you said, take for granted. Well, China graduates approximately 100,000 engineers every year. Where do they go? Yeah. They're not all defense and air and... Sure, sure. Uh, a great portion of those are manufacturing engineers. Wow. And these guys are experts in materials, experts in dealing with materials. And these factories have technical crews that, that are very competent. It, it's, it's interesting you say this because the more that you're saying this, the more I'm like, I need to go to China. You need to go to China. <laughs> it, you know, especially and I'm not sure. Not just for the food. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. Not like, hi, okay, I get it. You know, Panda Express is not Chinese food. Let's just be real. But I mean, I'm, I'm very much interested in, I think that you and I need to go on an eclectic food journey. That would, that sounds like a, and it will also source some products, I'm sure, at the same time. Yeah. Be careful but, what you wish yeah. for. <laughs> Um, okay, well, here, let's, since, you know, we've already lost one person, I, I hope we don't lose another, but no, um, let's, I guess, let's sort of wrap with this. What are, what would you say are, and I don't want to stick you to like top five, top 10, whatever, but what would you say are the most common mistakes that people make when sourcing? Uh, well, number one is no quality check. Okay. That's just the biggest, just no quality check. And number two is, uh. It's very interesting when you're designing something, there's the concept of if you can name it and you want it, you can get it. Which has a corollary, if you don't name it. <laughs> uh, you ain't getting it. <laughs> you ain't get, you're getting what someone else wants is basically what happens. Or maybe what's cheapest or what's sitting right next to them. Exactly. Right. So it comes in, you say, why is this blue? I said, well, you didn't tell us what color to And make I had a it. bolt of blue fabric right we next to me. I had a bolt of blue fa <laughs> fabric. We thought you didn't care. Right. He says, well, I don't want these. Uh, well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Because we don't either. And you've already paid <laughs> us. You paid us. <laughs> so, so quality control and name then it. name it. Name it down. Down to the minutia. Whatever you don't name, someone else has to name. Mm. And they're not going to call you every day. Remember, they don't speak English. Usually, they're not going to call you every time there's a problem. I'm actually really glad you said that because I've, in the process of going through this, I've had my own personal uh, hesitance in trying to customize too many things. And it kind of sounds like that is not actually the right frame of mind to look at it. Truthfully, what I would do, see, everything I did was custom. Okay. I'd go to the factory, I'd sit with the, their designer. We'd, we'd be set on what they'd want. And I'd, I would approve it in two dimensions. Okay. Then I'd approve it in three dimensions. Either the first one made or the, if they had to be a mold, I would approve the blank that's mm -hmm. going to make the mold out of. And, uh, you know, because jumping from two dimensions to three dimensions, it, it sounds easy, but it's difficult. You know, all of a sudden, you know, especially when you're dealing with a little drawing that's uh, 12 inches high yeah. and you're going to make something that's six foot tall, all of a sudden these little details on the mouth that you, you wanted all of a sudden disappear. Disappear. Right. <clears throat> okay, good. So then quality control. Quality control. Name it down to whatever level of detail possible. So top two. Top two. And then the other one I mentioned was... Don't even try to talk the price. Don't even start negotiating until your product is 100% completely specced as far as packaging, paints, everything. Is that almost like a red flag for them if someone talks price too soon? Well, it's, it's kind of opening the gate because, yeah. okay, I'll give them a deal on this. I'll make it up on the packaging. Right. Mm. Okay. You know, what are you going to do? Send it to another packager to package yeah. it after they unpack all of this, repack it. Oh, and you want money too? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing is, people try to do it without a group. Okay. Here you're trying to get this job done that literally takes a whole organization, and you've decided to wear every function. every job, every mm -hmm. function in that organization, and you've taken on things that you're not expert with. Find an expert. Find someone who knows. Call, ask, 
get them get them done. Or yeah. there's the easy way: just get someone who knows at the beginning. Sure. Let them handle all the rough spots. What I would do is I I would take someone who knows nothing. I would give them something who kno- someone who knows everything, mm-hmm. and let them work together to sure. get the product. Sure. Well, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. <laughs> especially when you walk through all the details. <clears throat> and it's funny because I knew coming into this particular episode that it was just going to be a um, a slap in the face, not in a bad way, but in the good way of knowing nothing to, okay, good, I know that there's a lot that I don't know. And there's a reason that there are people who you know, use sourcing agents and like highly recommend sourcing agents, highly. Well, you know the other, you know the other thing is you can get a sourcing agent that's going to give you much grief. Okay. So is he really part of your group, or is he really just is he just going to take you for as much as he can until you get rid of him and find someone else? Well, and that brings actually a question that I can't believe I didn't ask earlier. But what? Okay, so what is price dependent on for a sourcing agent, like for yourself or someone else? You can even go with yourself. So what? What do you determine your price on? And what is your price? It depends, you know, it's, it's funny, it depends what I have to do. Okay. It, it all depends, and it, it depends how big it is. Usually, usually with new guys, it's lunch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. You know where they're at. <laughs> it's usually it's lunch, and I tell them, look, if you start making money, Scorpion it goes salad. big. <laughs> Put put me in for for a percent or a nickel sure. an item or a diamond item, what what you can handle if if you do good. Okay, uh, but I'm not going to take a new guy and make it difficult. For okay, him. that makes sense. That's that's not war. I, I do this for fun. Yeah. So someone who someone who um have their, they've already succeeded on their first product, they're coming in for a second product. What what's the going rate? Well, I would I would basically. Find out exactly what their profit margin is. I have one guy I sourced for him. I did such a good job. He gave me five percent of his company. Wow. Because then you're also invested, I guess. But at I did that a, point, I too. did a great job. Okay. I mean, I I did an incredible <laughs> job for the guy. Uh, without you, there wouldn't have been a business. A product, right? Yeah. Um, is it often that you find yourself working only for percentage, or is it some? Is it sometimes just flat rate? What is what is kind of the we can do a flat rate if okay. I know it's just I'm just gonna make an I'm making an introduction mm-hmm. uh, give me a couple hundred bucks for okay. the introduction or, or give me if, if I know it's it's long term and they're gonna need me to maintain that that line for them I want two and a half or five percent okay okay that makes sense so it really depends on this person's a veteran but he knows he needs your advice on this thing you're going to have varying rates based on the amount of effort it's going to take on your part, longevity of the relationship, that kind of thing. Yeah, how much of a part of a group, if I'm going to maintain my status as part of your group, there's got to be a fair exchange. Cause that makes sense. I, I work for free for just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Only yeah. so much advice. Yeah. So uh, Jade wanted to pose the question for you. What are the, um, what's the chronological list of expenses one should expect to make aside from product cost? Well, you have product cost, you have shipping, you have tariffs, Mm -hmm. you have inspection fees, you have agent fees. What's the difference, agent fee, inspection fee? Or what is an agent fee? Well, let's say I hook you up with an agent. Yeah. Typically, now this is something most people don't know too, typically the agent will get paid by the factory for bringing you the business. Mm. The guy says, here, I got a customer. And they're going to pay that. And I need you to cooperate with me. <laughs> <laughs> so so you you should also make it worth their while. Okay. But, but let's say it's going to be 5 or 10%, depending on what they have to do. So And depending on how big the order of it. Obviously, if it's a big order, they're willing to take a smaller percentage. Sure, sure. And then... Uh, I make sure the agents handle all of the shipping details because that that if you've never had something shipped, you know they're going to ask you questions. Yeah. And how do you want this? What do you want the service? You better have your shipping to? dictionary out. And all of a sudden, you're going to say, "Well, uh, yeah, that sounds good." <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to look like an idiot. Gloss over. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it's a lot of work because you take a look. What does it take to be a good Amazon seller? Yeah. What does it take to be a good Amazon? Seller? You know, from what I'm studying, a lot, one, 
but, but it seems to me a quality product. Yeah, yeah, but that's given all that. Yeah. I don't care if you have the highest quality product at the best price. Right. If your marketing falls down, you're not selling sure. one. Yeah. You're going to It seems show like a quality product just makes your marketing easier. Easier. Yeah. So if your marketing is up to snuff, you can sell ice cubes to Eskimos. Yeah, yeah. Right? So now, instead of spending your time marketing, now you're spending your time trying to figure out how to get your product shipped. Does right. that make sense? No. You're trying to worry about quality control. You're trying to worry about details. So you're taking on all yeah. of the functions when really you should just be worrying about marketing this product. Right. That makes sense. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes sense because Amazon specifically does boil down to marketing. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And it kind of, it's interesting because on, you know, I think if we were to look at the takeaways from the things that we've kind of gone over here, it really does boil down to at the end of the day, you have actions that need to be done from beginning to end. And either you have to be the professional along that line or you have to have professionals along that line. Because if you don't, your product falls down at one of those points. Yeah, because all you need is for your market, marketing to be superb and spot on. And then all of a sudden, all the returns start filing in. <laughs> right, which just ain't fun. Especially no. Amazon, you know, is saying anything that's ordered from, I think it's October 1st, all the way through the end of December. They can return all the way until the end of January. So with basically no question. So yeah, it's with Amazon specifically, you damn well better have a good product or you will be giving Amazon back all that money. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm working with a customer right now, and I'm working with a factory that's done the order before. Uh, I went, I designed, I found the factory, we went over it, I approved the samples, customer approved the samples. Mm -hmm. So now they're doing the reorder. So you'd think, well, oh, okay, they know you, they know the product, it should right. be easy, right? My quality control girl flunked every item. Whoa, if I could mic the drop and the... You wouldn't think that that would be the case factory. at all. You wouldn't think that'd be the case at all. And then what do we do? What do I do now? Yeah. If I freak out? No, I don't freak out. Well, yeah, but you've also <laughs> got as many years of experience as I've been alive, so... But at this point, everyone knows. I sent a message, everyone, okay, there's going to be a 100% inspection. Please don't box up anything until it's inspected. I'll have someone there to check it all out. Wow. Okay. It will cost me. Yeah. But it's much cheaper than the returns. That's much cheaper than losing the whole order. Yeah. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, you know, it's good because I, I already knew that the sourcing element of this gig was very important. I kind of had, I had the vague concept, but now I know for certain that, you know, we need to talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We need to talk. <laughs> um, you know, I think I don't want this podcast to be too long because I, I can tell you right now uh, with this conversation, I guarantee we could easily just do a podcast a thon and be talking for the next like six, seven hours. I also know you've got something on smoker, so you that's have right. to go and pull that off the smoker or that's just wasted meat and that's unacceptable. So with that, <laughs> I think we will um, call this episode a wrap. I guarantee we'll have you on again if you're uh, if I haven't completely offended you with my just general tone and attitude. I can live with it. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, with that, we will we will call this podcast uh, a wrap. Uh, make sure to subscribe again if you can like it, share it, any and all of that. Um, definitely do so. Um, this will also be on YouTube. So if you want to watch some of the funny antics, um, I am or available value. for kids parties. That's right, and we will we will put information for Marty in the link of basically anything and everything um, that any platform. So you'll be able to get a hold of him if you can't reach out to support at managedbystats.com, and we will definitely um, you know pass along people. And um, uh, no, I think I think we're gonna do it just through we're gonna do it through description. Um, that way, you know, we can give whatever preferred contact method you have. But um, other than that. Enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next podcast. Take care.